You are listening to When Therapists Watch TV, where we discuss today's buzzworthy TV shows and what they can teach us about ourselves, our relationships, and the world around us. I'm your host, Dr. Terry Bly, licensed clinical psychologist at LA Mental Health. Today on When Therapists Watch TV, we are going to shake things up and um, feature a kid's show, which we have not done up till now. We're going to talk about Bluey. Now, if you are like me and your kids are older or you don't have kids, you may not be familiar with this show, but it is a tremendously popular kids show on Disney+. Plus. You can also stream some episodes on YouTube and I think Hulu. Um, so this is an Australian show that is popular not just with children, but also with parents. And I had a number of colleagues reach out to me and say that I should focus on this show. And so I thought, sure, I'll check it out. And um, yeah, I think there's a lot worth talking about with Bluey. Um, when I think of Australian children's shows, I think of the Wiggles. So it took me a little while because I still have some oh, holdover like trauma from being <laughs> saturated in the Wiggles back in the uh, mid 2000s. Um, anyway, so to talk about Bluey, uh, we're gonna explore some of the themes in the shows, what makes it so popular. Um, and we're also gonna talk though about kids and television. It's been a controversial topic probably for as long as there's been television, but I brought two uh, moms who are also therapists who work with kids to just talk a little bit about, um, you know, what, what can kids get out of television? Are there any benefits to letting your children watch television? How do you know if it's too much? And, and how can you get the most out of those times when your kids do watch television? So to talk about all of this with me, I have Kelly Piper, and Miranda Barker, and I'm gonna let you two introduce yourselves. Maybe just give us a little bit of information about who you are as a therapist, and if you're willing, who you are as a mom. Sure. Um, I'm Kelly Piper. I am the Director of Child Services here at Ellie Mental Health. Um, I see kids. That's what I do. That's been my career. Um, so I'm you get to speak to this as a mom and a therapist who I specializes do. I do. in working with children. Awesome. I do. I, adults scare me, so <laughs> I don't work with adults. I say that. I work with parents, but not adults. Parents um, can be kind of scary, though. They, they are <laughs> just, scary. Just to be clear, they yeah. scare me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and then I am a mom to a six-year-old, um, and so um, I think... You know, I was telling you before, but most of my bluey watching has come in sort of dramatic ways <laughs> because it, my my kid will watch bluey when she's sick. She mm -hmm. likes to watch bluey when she's sick, um, so it's always kind of like half sleep deprived, oh, half for like you. really yes, <laughs> yes, well and her probably, and her. but very much in like the mom mm -hmm. zone. So uh, it's an interesting perspective on bluey. But okay. That makes sense. So there's going to be a little bit of like pain as you talk about it. <laughs> it's good. It, okay. it keeps, there's a calmness to it, yeah. right? And yeah. A, a regulatory thing that happens. Oh, sure. So Especially that cute little theme song. <laughs> or do you want to like kill the theme song because... Only on episode, I think the last time that we had the stomach flu go through, it was like episode 52 um, of the night where I was like, okay, we need to maybe transition away from Bluey at this point and do something else. Uh, so I think episode 52 is when the Bluey theme song starts All becoming right. crazy making. Okay, that's good to know. Yeah. Well, and it's I important it. to note that like there are three seasons, and I think every season has like fifty episodes or something. Right, yeah, like, there's they're short episodes, but they're like nine minutes long. If or whatever. even, oh yeah, and, mm -hmm. which is also different from when my kids were little because yeah. we didn't have iPads or anything. Uh -huh. and so anyway, so <laughs> Miranda, a little bit about you. Yeah, my name is Miranda Barker. I am a therapist here at Ellie. I see mostly kids and college students, some adolescents, and then I'm also the executive producer here. So. I am on a different podcast, typically called um, The Therapist Thrival Guide, and I saw that we were doing a Bluey episode, and I messaged Terry, and I was like, you have to <laughs> yeah. let me on this episode. You're like, take me off the other one I was scheduled for. I want it on I Bluey. I want this one. I love <laughs> Bluey. Um, <laughs> I probably love Bluey more than my daughter, but um, so I have a two and a half year old, and um, she's not quite in like the full TV watching mode. And so it really is like when she's sick or if mm -hmm. we're like at a restaurant with friends and we're like, we need some adult time, here's an iPad. Um, and that's when Bluey comes mm -hmm. in. But I'm excited to talk about Bluey because I feel like there have been, most of the times that I've, she's watched Bluey, I've also watched the episodes with her. So um, 
there have been times where I've watched episodes and thought to myself, oh my gosh, as a therapist, this is so good. I love this. Yeah. Um, and so we'll dive okay. into some of yeah. those episodes today yeah, too. Absolutely. I think just a little context on children's television. I'm just going to do a mm -hmm. brief overview. Yeah. Um, when, so my kids were little, obviously it wasn't the beginning of children's television, but it's when I, you know, started to get into like, there was Nickelodeon, there was Disney, there were some different options. And what seemed to be the dividing line with parents at the time is you had shows that were clearly just for kids and had nothing of value for parents. Mm -hmm. There were shows that um, were educational, then there were ones that just seemed to be purely for entertainment. Mm -hmm. um, and then you had ones where they tried to throw in some little bones for the parents, <laughs> which are always my favorite. Uh -huh where they acknowledge that, you know, there's a good chance parent is going to be watching mm -hmm. this. Let's give them something to laugh mm -hmm. at. Let's give them something to appreciate. Um, the Wiggles were not that show. And it just so <laughs> happens that my oldest was obsessed with it. Oh, my gosh. And I, I still wake up with, like, fruit salad. There's one of their songs, like, in my head. Hot and it's, potato, hot oh, potato. stop it. <laughs> stop it. <laughs> yes, those. Mm -hmm. um, and, and I, I just always kind of resented those shows that just refused to give parents anything <laughs> that we could latch on to. And so, like, with my girls, I wanted them to watch stuff like Word Girl, Phineas and Ferb, mm -hmm. um, uh, Mighty B. I don't know if you guys are even familiar with that one. Amy Poehler did a, a kid's oh, cartoon. Um, and it was so good. So, so to me, that's kind of how I categorize mm -hmm. shows. Is, is there anything of value to the kids, but also... Do they give parents something to appreciate? Yep. And when I was watching Bluey, I thought, okay, well, I know that Bluey fits that something for parents to appreciate. That was immediately clear mm -hmm. to me. Um, just and they do it so quickly. It's just these little things, these little moments that are clearly just the adults are gonna and the oh, room yeah. are gonna appreciate, oh, and yeah. the kids it's just gonna go. I right think over a perfect head. example of that would be there's an episode I think called like New Year's Day or something where the parents are clearly hung over <laughs> and it is so funny i didn't even watch that episode but my husband did and then he thought it was so funny because you're watching yeah. this and the parents <laughs> are, are clearly hung over and then he's he's like you need to watch this episode miranda you're yeah. gonna think this is hilarious yes so, exactly stuff like that and the yep. kids are gonna have no idea mm -hmm. um or when the i don't remember what episode it was but like the, the, a dad drops like one of their little cousins by or something and kid had napped uh -huh. yep. and so it was totally like clearly exhausted and the, and the kid's dad was like, all right, well, bye, yep. <laughs> <laughs> runs off and you know exactly why he's doing that because mm -hmm. he's like, I'm just going to leave this little sleep deprived nightmare in your living room and I'm yep. going to get out of here. Yep. So I loved that, but I would love to know from you guys, why, what do you think? What do you think makes this show such a sensation? I think I read it for the about it like in the Atlantic or something for the first time. Like it was in some, uh, you know, adult magazine mm -hmm. and, and read about how it was so transformative or something that is groundbreaking. I don't remember, mm -hmm. but but tell me, what do you guys think makes this so popular, and why do you like it, and and have that be like? Why is that the show you your kids watch? Well, I think that I think that they found this great formula where they there's little nuggets of socio-emotional learning for kids mm. but then there's also um there is so much that the parents can enjoy in this show and i think that they realized i think i even heard an art heard a, an interview one time with the creator of bluey where he was talking about how he knew that parents were going to choose shows that entertained them mm. over other shows oh sure and so he knew if you know if a parent thinks this is funny and doesn't doesn't drive it, it doesn't drive a parent crazy mm -hmm. then they're more likely to play it for their mm -hmm. kids and that is a hundred percent true for yeah for my household <laughs> yeah this so, is why barney was banned like we literally it was it was forbidden in well my home. and like so a little bit of context we adopted my daughter when she was two years old and so i didn't have to like navigate the really early days of of like coco melon mm -hmm. and that sort of stuff thank I god don't, i don't know what that is <laughs> but, and i'm not um, going to look it up because oh my word <laughs> your expression has me thinking i, I it's don't trash need okay. and, and there, are, there are research studies about <laughs> really? how it's it's not great for kids development all that to say it's wildly popular on youtube and, and really? netflix and everything and so i didn't have to navigate that with my daughter as much we we stayed clear of the baby shark era but like so is that like the teletubbies of oh, this it's, decade it's you so guys know what the teletubbies oh, yeah yeah because yeah. that was pretty awful yeah it's all it's all songs it's really all bright colors really like fast very, things 
very stimulating. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So um, not overly stimulating. Like very catchy sorts of, of songs. My kid actually still really, really likes Coco Melon. Because <laughs> uh, Teletubbies was just like being on an acid trip. Like watching yeah. it was just like, <laughs> I think I'm supposed to be high to watch this. Yeah, no. yeah, but I think that, um, so I lost my train of thought, but Sorry. like, but I'll interrupt you, I th but. you're fine. <laughs> but um, I think that Bluey gives a little bit for the kids, gives a lot for the parents, mm -hmm. and so it, it doesn't drive them crazy. So yeah. they're like, I can I can play an episode for my for my kid and know that it's going to be decent. Mm -hmm. And if I'm in the same room with them, if we're watching together, um, there are going to be things that I laugh about. Yeah, too. you might actually enjoy it. You yeah, might find it like yeah. something worth your time. Mm -hmm. I think also it's a show that doesn't make you feel bad as a parent. I think there's like a lot of shows that make so you feel really bad. I remember my kiddo when she was little really loved Daniel Tiger. Um, and but there's a lot don't. of good, um, kind of based on, they took an animated show and made an animated show out of um, Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood, mm -hmm. some of the characters on Mr. Rogers' Neighborhood. And like Mr. Rogers, it was very wholesome mm -hmm. and it was, um, very catchy for kids and lots of really great lessons. I love Daniel Tiger in my yeah. household too. Like, okay. but it made me feel bad as a mom because, <laughs> like, Daniel Tiger's mom is a rock star. Yes, that's and a good point. No, right. mm -hmm. no parent right. on the face of the planet mm -hmm. can like hold it together right. like Daniel Tiger's mom. <laughs> and so I was, I would watch this, and I am just shaking my head, going like this would never happen. Like, yeah. I would be throwing things. Which uh. I think is actually the article I read. I wish I remember it, it talked about. It. I think that's what they actually, now that you mention mm -hmm. that, I think that's what they focused on with Bluey, mm -hmm. was that these are not perfect parents. Mm -mm. They're just parents. Mm -hmm. and, and when I was watching those episodes, I know, like, the, the baby race one, you know, and, and baby sleeping on the floor and dad, you know, drooling, and then dad is sleeping on the floor oh, and yeah. drooling, uh -huh. you know, and, and just seeing parents <laughs> just being, you know, exhausted, imperfect, imperfect mm -hmm. parents, imperfect doing the parents. best they can. And yes, so, so this Daniel Tiger's mom person just makes you feel like you're falling down on the job. It does. Yeah. And so I think Bluey has this realism yep. to yeah. it where you can identify with it. It doesn't make you feel mm -hmm. like a bad parent. Mm -hmm. uh, it normalizes some of the very typical struggles mm -hmm. that you have as a parent. Um, even just the topics that they pick, mm -hmm. uh, I think, do a great job in kind of going like, I never knew that you could make a show about that. Yeah. Like, that's a fantastic yeah. topic to make a show about. And they're bite-sized, mm -hmm. they right? Are, so you don't have yeah. to commit to an hour and a yeah. half long movie. It's like <laughs> nine, 12 minutes, yeah. whatever it might be. So it's really digestible. Mm -hmm. It really is like, you need to make a phone call. Your kid isn't entertaining themselves. So, you know, here, watch Bluey. I'm going to yep. go. Yep. Make a call or whatever. It's, you're right. It's nice that it's they're just bite size. Um, and it just occurred to me now that something that makes it different than a lot of the kids shows that I'm thinking of when my kids were little, like Little Einsteins, there weren't parents. Like <laughs> you never saw, you <laughs> rarely saw parents actually in the show. There'd be like these little kids running around doing all these things. <laughs> And yeah. you never saw their parents. And if you did see them, it was like you didn't see their head. You just yeah, saw them. Yeah, right. They just kind of ran in and ran out. Uh -huh. And I do like that Bluey has the little kids interacting with their parents so much, which is real life, right? Well, and it's kids. inspiring, too. Like, yeah. I think that the parents, yes, they're imperfect, but they also are just really sweet. Like, the way that they imagine with their kids, the way they play with their yeah. kids. Like, um, I think a lot of people who watch the show... Um, they they see the value in in like how interacting with your kids and and I think that the parents do a good job of modeling a good balance of that of like no I'm you know I'm gonna go take a nap you go play or mm -hmm. like I'm gonna go do this um, but then also there's this one episode where um, the dad has to go to work and the kids are so like they're playing with him and then they're mm -hmm. so upset that he has to go to work and he's like, I'll be back soon. And then he ends up deciding, okay, I'll be a little late to work. I'll play with you a little bit longer. And it's just really cute. Yeah. And so I think you do see a balance with the parents. And yes, they're not imperfect, but I think they also model kind of like trying your best really well. Yeah, yeah which is what all of us, it's all we can do. Mm -hmm. And we're not ever going to get it right every day. I well, and going like back to the baby race episode too, that's my favorite, hands down favorite episode yeah. of of Bluey because it makes me cry as a mom, which is silly, but um, it it's just to give you some context, you've got mom and dad and you've got the two daughters 
Bluey and Bingo. And the episode is all about when Bluey is a brand new baby and mom is taking Bluey to the mom's groups and she's kind of comparing Bluey's progress with yeah. the other kids in this group. And and, and keeps going to the doctor. Yeah. Is this normal? Is this Am normal? Okay? Is this normal? <laughs> yeah. And I think that parents absolutely do that where mm -hmm. they Especially with see, their first. Yeah, they'll see, oh my goodness, um, this kid is walking before my kid, or they mm -hmm. potty trained already, or they mm -hmm. did this, and you know, why is my kid falling behind? Yeah. And, and I think that that episode does such a good job of um, kind of showing that each kid kind of develops yeah. on, their, on their own trajectory, and m your role as a parent is to cheer on your kid yeah. and, to, and to also... Um, recognize that you're doing good as a parent and that yeah. parenting is hard and um, I remember the first time I watched that episode I mean I was we were probably sitting on the couch together and then my daughter probably like went off and did something else and then I'm probably I'm just like sitting on the couch being like oh this is so sweet in tears I am doing great yes <laughs> you know and um, and so I think that there are episodes like that where mm -hmm. they have this deeper meaning and yeah. like, yes, it's entertaining for the kids, but it's also, I think, a good reminder for parents. The kids are going to watch and going to think it's funny that, mm -hmm. that Blue is crawling backwards. Exactly. But the parents are going to be the ones who are like, oh, yeah, I oh, remember yeah. worrying mm -hmm. that my kid wasn't meeting all their milestones right. on time and they're not talking as you know early as the other kids. I mm -hmm. uh, wish we could keep that lesson as parents as they get older. I think we lose track of that. And it's a good lesson no matter oh, how yeah. old your kids are. Oh, yeah. You know, if they're not making the A baseball team, <laughs> they're probably going to be fine. Mm -hmm. and if, you know, if parents take it's the same, cat, you know, like, oh, they're not on the top baseball team, so they're not going to make varsity, and then they're not going to get a college scholarship, and then yeah. they're not going to succeed, and they're going to have a million dollars worth, like, that's kind of where... Because all professional athletes yes. succeed. Um, but you hear parents do that, like, comparing their kids to, the, you know, all the other kids, even in through... Well, and what a nightmare with, like, social media, where mm -hmm. it adds kind of another aspect where you are expected to kind of put your kid on display or, or even just to, like, show off their different milestones. You're seeing other people's milestones or mm -hmm. kids' milestones, and then you're naturally going to compare. And I think that, um, that that episode is just a sweet reminder that everybody is kind of marching to their own beat and... Yeah, it's sweet. But yeah, episodes like that are really sweet. And the sticky, so which one of you recommended Sticky Gecko? Was that? It was Kelly. I Kelly? do like that episode too. I do like Sticky Gecko. I like remember? Rain though too. I think Rain I think is. That one I, for some reason, I don't think I got that one. Rain. Wait, so, so why do you like, I, I like, I know what you're talking about with the Rain one where, it, I don't think there's any talking in that yeah, episode. Yeah, it's, really, oh, okay. like, it's mostly silent. My kid didn't like that episode. <laughs> yeah, that was maybe more of a, a parent. But isn't the sticky gecko one funny because um, the mom is trying to get them get out them the door? Get them out the door. <laughs> like, yeah. And there, I, that's why I like that one too, is mom is just trying to get them out the door and the kids are finding a million ways to, you know, delay it, which is, you know, why parents show up late to everything. Is, is that. Mm -hmm. Feel that deeply. <laughs> yes. Go brush <laughs> the, your teeth and then the come struggle. back with a banana. That you might know, be like, a traumatizing episode for me, actually. Like, I'm having a little... It's too close to home. Yeah. I'm like, oh, yeah. I mm. just wanted to get to the park. I'm like, oh. <laughs> but I think in that way, too, it normalizes um, the, the parenting struggle. And I think sometimes as a parent, you feel like, you're the only one who struggles with yeah. your kids not paying attention or finding every reason to not go to bed or to delay whatever they need to be doing or uh, because for some reason it feels like all the other parents are there on time, mm -hmm. right? I know, right? And I, I don't, like, they can't be, right? right? Like, it's not possible. Maybe just it couldn't just be me always showing up late with my kids. So I think it, it reminds me when I see things like that, that there's also nothing wrong with my kid, my mm -hmm. struggle, the way that we parent. Like mm -hmm. this is a universal mm -hmm. struggle with kids. It is designed to be that way. Uh, so I find some grounding, I think, in some of the topics and, mm -hmm. and some of the way that it's portrayed uh, and just reassurance of like, okay, if Bluey is doing it, then it's gotta be okay. <laughs> if Bluey's parents are struggling with this, then it's okay that I am. So do you ever recommend, would you, as a, as a child therapist, would you ever recommend this show to parents? Is, like, would you go that far? 
I have. Yeah. Um, and sometimes parents will bring it up to me mm -hmm. um, and say, you know, oh, have you seen? And I'm like, oh, yeah, yes, I have. <laughs> um, and so I think in that way, it's a great tool. And I find that it's mainly about working with parents. Mm -hmm. So I'm recommending it not for the kid, not for, oh. I'm recommending it for the oh, parents. Oh, sure. Okay. Um, to more oh, kind great. of understand that their struggle is real mm -hmm. and to find validation. Mm -hmm. To laugh about it. To laugh mm -hmm. about it to as a, a mutual enjoyment kind mm -hmm. of thing with their kids. Um, because a lot of parents like you don't want to watch the shows or the movies or the things that just have nothing to do with anything yeah. that they care about. Uh, and so I, I think I have found myself more recommending it for a parent yeah. than necessarily yeah. a child. Do you think they model, uh, and it might be hard to think of this on the spot, but I find myself wondering, like, do you, do you think there are episodes in there that, that where they're modeling the kind of parenting stuff you're trying to communicate to mm -hmm. the parents and you can say, look, just watch this episode. They do a really good job of, of showing what I'm trying to talk to you about. Yeah, and I think a lot of times I'm trying to be as real as I possibly can when I'm working with parents about, like, I tell you these things mm -hmm. and we talk about it and I am under no illusion that your life functions. Yeah. Like the book that you right. are reading or the article that we may have discussed or like we, you know, you're bringing in, like, I know that your life doesn't look like this. Mm -hmm. uh, and so I find that... Bluey is more of that, this is what your life yeah. actually looks like. Uh, and then it makes it a lot easier to tackle some of those tough mm -hmm. topics or the feelings of guilt and shame and just parenting struggle that come with raising kids because mm -hmm. uh, it is not an easy journey for any parent, let alone parents who have kids who maybe struggle more with certain aspects. Um, of life. So I, I find it very validating and normalizing. I think that's a good distinction because <clears throat> if I am recommending a show because I want a child to learn something, maybe it's like anger or self-control or different things like that, I'm probably more likely to recommend Daniel Tiger or something like okay. that because there's little jingles and songs that can be helpful to reiterate and help mm -hmm. a child learn some of those different topics. But um, but I do like to, I do like Bluey f for exactly what you were just saying because I think it normalizes a lot of people's experience as parents. But there is one episode that I do recommend as a therapist to try to help under to, to help parents understand why play is so important mm -hmm. for children to process things because I think I do a lot of play in sessions with kids and I think parents sometimes might say well, aren't you just playing with the dolls? Aren't you just playing with mm -hmm. sand? What is this actually, what's the purpose How of this? How is this therapy? Yeah, and I think that you can, I can very easily point to the episode that's called a like copycat, where dad, did you end up watching that one? I don't. Oh, Terry, it's so good. So. so. Did you what, guys recommend that one? I don't remember I if don't we did think, or not. I don't think in the stream. I don't think so. So copycat is one of my favorite episodes because what happens is, um, well, I mean, the first part of the show is really just that Bluey's copying everything her dad does, but um, which is cute in itself. But then later on in the show, they're going for a walk or something, and they find a bird that had gotten hurt. And so then they take the bird to the vet, and then the bird ends up dying. Mm. And so then they and Bluey's really sad. And so then they they go back home. And Bluey wants to reenact everything that had happened that day. And so Bluey has mom and dad and Bingo kind of play through everything that had just happened. Bingo plays the vet and oh. mom plays the receptionist, sure. I think. And so then yeah. they, they bring the, the bird to the vet. And then mom at the end of it says, good news, the bird lived. And then Bluey goes, no, 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 mom, the, the bird died. And so it, I think a lot of times adults and parents, we think, oh, we want to give a better ending yeah. for our yeah. child. Let's we rewrite want, the story. <laughs> yeah, we want to rewrite the story. Yeah. We want to help them, you know, like get through this and, and having a positive spin is mm -hmm. going to help them. But I loved how Bluey says, no, no, the bird died. And so then they, they play through, through that and it helps Bluey understand what just happened and process it. And mm -hmm. I think that sometimes parents don't quite understand how important play is 
in terms of processing things that are happening to us or traumatic things for kids. <clears throat> and I think they also sometimes don't understand why kids play through hard things or dark things mm -hmm. or sad things and yeah. they don't put a spin, like a positive spin mm -hmm. on it. And so I think that that episode does a good job of demonstrating that. That oh, was the episode. That's a that really I, good one. Yeah. Oh yeah, that that's was the episode example. that I watched, and I was like, because <gasps> they're not perfect she's... parents, but they no. do a lot of stuff really well. Mm -hmm. I'm guessing there isn't an episode where like mom and dad throw dishes at each other. Like mom <laughs> and dad seem to have a really good so. relationship too. Uh -huh. Like maybe. Yeah. I mean, again, I don't know if it ever shows them no. like getting really pissed off at each other or anything, but but it's, so it's it's they're imperfect parents, but they're also doing most things really they're well. They're trying. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm, of course, I'm paying attention to the relationship between mom and dad because mm -hmm. it's couples more, therapist. yeah, yeah. the yeah. couples therapy thing, and and they do a lot of, I mean, their handoffs to each other and the way they, you know, compliment each other and and, I don't know, I just think they've got a nice rapport mm -hmm. for for parents to watch. Also, I think probably doesn't ever go that smoothly through 52 episodes for real parents. But I mean, you'll hear moms say things like. Oh, that sounds like your dad. Yeah. Or, you know, like yeah. things like that. But no, there's no well, there was dish one, throwing. One of the episodes, I don't even remember which one this was, when dad is in the, it's the one where they have dad freeze whenever they play the xylophone. And at one point he's frozen with his finger, and they move his finger up his nose or whatever, and he's frozen, and mom walks by and she goes, oh, it looks like our first date or when we first met or whatever. <laughs> and, and so I do think that that's good stuff. One thing, though, that I mentioned to you guys when I was, when I was messaging you before yesterday, though, was the one thing, one thing that I didn't like and I, that I find is, isn't just in shows, but seems to be in just society in general, is how dad gets to be the goofball mm -hmm. and mom has to keep things more serious. That, you know, she's rolling her eyes, she's, she's playing, but dad's the one who they're drawing on and mm -hmm. they're dressing up and he's frozen with his finger <laughs> up his nose. And you never see a mom get to be, at least not in anything I've watched, I, and even in, like I said, real life, at the playground or whatever, mm -hmm. it seems like it's the dads who get more permission to be silly, mm -hmm. and moms have to be the serious ones, like making sure everything is okay or whatever. Like, mm -hmm. I, I'm curious, if you guys ever noticed that? I, I noticed it because I wanted to be the goofy one at the playground or at the, you know, chaperoning or whatever, and mm -hmm. it just seemed like none of the moms around me were on board <laughs> with that. The, mm -hmm. They were all very serious, and mm -hmm. it was the dads. Um, and that always bothered me, and so I was a little disappointed to see that this show also carried had that, that out, had that same, and as, as young moms, like, do you guys have any thoughts about that? Have you noticed that, or is this the first time anyone's ever brought that up as a problem? I think that you see mom be goofy in some of the episodes. Like, I don't mm -hmm. think she's serious all the time. She plays a lot with the kids, but um, I totally see what you're saying. Like, I think that, I think TV shows in general always portray dads as like the goofy yeah. I mean Terry you and I have talked about yeah. this before with like modern family or yeah. like um even shrinking where like pick your show yeah, yeah. dad's a doofus mm -hmm. and mom is the serious one mm -hmm. but I think honestly like in a lot of families those are the dynamics yeah. like it feels like to a certain extent right or wrong, good or bad, like there's no judgment there. I think moms are the glue that holds well, a lot of families together. I mean, I do think that's how it goes. I just, is it because that's how we it. are or is it because that's what's expected of us? So my bigger question is like, if we saw more moms being goofy, would we feel, can you be, can you be goofy and also be the glue? Can you be playing and frozen with your finger up your nose, mm -hmm. and also make sure everybody's got their lunch at school. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. like I, I, why, why do we seem to not think those two things can go together? Mm -hmm. Well, and even another kind of critique going off of that is, um, and I know that most shows aren't going to show this either, but like um, two mom families, two dad families, mm -hmm. things like that, other family dynamics right. where maybe you don't have the same stereotypes. Mm -hmm. or um, And so I do think that like, I, I don't know, Terry. That's a hard question. You're challenging me. <laughs> well, even in Modern Family, the two mm -hmm. dads, Cam was the goofier mm -hmm. one, and Mitch was... The high-strung yeah, one. Yeah, the high-strung yep. yep. kind of did fit more of the... Although Cam was the one who stayed at home, I think, but was the goofy one. Mm -hmm. Anyway, so you still see that dynamic playing out, but I just I wish it wasn't always the mom who was... Because, Anna, I, I think... 
do we do we not like I, I find myself going to even like female comedians like I've had such a hard time do we is there something we don't like about women being silly hmm. about women being goofy and silly and and like letting that part of themselves show why do we want women to be so buttoned up all the time what do you think kelly <laughs> I'm like, how do you punch that? <laughs> You're like, I don't have an answer. What do you think, Kelly? You're the expert on uh, something. I'm probably so. in my in my marriage. I am probably the goofier one, though. Too. Yeah, I was so too. That's so. like as I'm thinking about this, I'm like, hmm. I mean, I think I, I think my husband is probably more serious than I am. But I was definitely the goofier one. Um, but I, like I said, in public, I felt like, and so at home, I was the goofier one. Mm -hmm. I mean, I would be the mm -hmm. one frozen with my finger mm -hmm. up my nose. But I just, when I was, we were out in public, I never felt like I, I always felt like You're I had to like place. keep that mm -hmm. in. And I'm definitely not the goofier one. Like I, so I own that. Um, yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, we could get into like, society and colonialism yeah. and like a lot of like really <laughs> deep <laughs> things really here deep with this. Uh, about like women's roles and all of that mm -hmm. even when you know women were expected to be at home all the time they were expected not to be mm -hmm. playing with the kids right. that wasn't their role um so i think there's mm -hmm. a lot of um kind That's of interesting yeah that that holdover because even you know the the stereotypical like Dad goes to work, mom yeah. stays at home, but mom is cooking and cleaning yeah. and doing the it's laundry. Her job. And, right. So absolutely. she has to take it seriously. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. And the kids are out in the yard playing, or but you never see mom playing mm -hmm. with kids. Um, so I think it's a, a broader kind of social commentary. Um, but I also think that that is part of the reason why parents watch it and like it is because mm -hmm. it isn't. It's more reflective of their families. Yeah, and it's not too challenging, right? Like when mm -hmm. I'm thinking about a show that I want to sit down and watch with my kid, mm -hmm. I probably, when she's like throwing up at 3 a.m., I'm not in the mood necessarily <laughs> to be challenging a lot of you your know, whole, societal like your, your structure. Gender roles oh, right. in, in the home you know? and am I being goofy enough? Well, maybe that's what it is, right? Mm -hmm. we, don't want to, we don't want parents... Part of this show is you don't want parents watching it, and like you said, feeling bad about themselves as a parent. Mm -hmm. So maybe we, we do, shows don't want to challenge it too much because then a mom might be like, "Well, crap, am I not goofy enough?" Looks like your kids maybe, are like, "Why aren't you more like yeah. chilly? Why are you silly like yeah. that?" And, and yeah. so I, I can see that that maybe just maybe it's society the, the shows reflect art reflects life, mm -hmm. right? So the the show is reflecting kind of the roles that expectations that we have of people. I just think it'd be, I, I personally think there'd be benefit for us to encourage moms to be a little sillier. And I think they might enjoy the, the mom <laughs> thing a little bit more, mm -hmm. especially if you're a stay-at-home mom, mm -hmm. to be so serious all the time. Oh, yeah. Just seems like a, making the, a hard job harder. Because <laughs> that was my favorite part when my kids were little. My favorite part was dressing up. Mm -hmm. was doing all of the, you know, role plays, who is which character, was going to the park and, like, I was not sitting on the bench. I was, like, you know, contorting myself to get through all the stuff and running and playing because that's, that's how I made the days go by. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I don't know, to me it helped me enjoy being a parent of little kids way better was to be silly with them. Well, and, I mean, research shows, too, just, like, how... Um, you know, 10 minutes of, of like fully involved play mm -hmm. really does wonders for a kid versus like an hour of kind of like half their right. play. Like if, yeah. you're, if you're in the same room, but you're like cleaning mm -hmm. or like on your phone or something, that's not going to be as beneficial yeah. as just like five or 10 minutes of just like, I am in your, I am, right. I am joining your world and I am going to, you know, let you make me a crazy spaghetti with yeah. syrup and yeah you know and so i think i think that that goes to show too how important it is to really jump into that world and and fully immerse yourself and let yourself be goofy with your kids because that's so helpful which i think this show does actually an excellent job the episodes i've seen of mom and dad being in the kids' world, but then also setting their boundaries. Of like, oh my gosh, yes. We're going to do this weekend away. Right. You're going to grandma's. And yep. they play with the kids and they're imaginary, you know, how the kids are going to uh -huh. chase after the parents. But in the end, the parents are like, yeah, we're going. Yep. We're going on this trip. And or you're even not like with the, us. there's the episode where 
mom is having a crazy morning. Like the kids are just crazy. And she, <clears throat> and dad walks in and she goes, I need 20 minutes. <laughs> And she goes and locks herself in her room for 20 minutes because she's like, I just need a break. I need a moment. Mm -hmm. And I thought that episode was so funny because that probably happens to me every day where I'm just like, I need a moment. Like you take our daughter and like go for a walk or something. And the kid, and you see the kids going like, did we do something wrong? Did Mm -hmm. we like, do we need to do something? And then, I mean, mom has like a moment of repair too, where she's like, you didn't do anything wrong. I just Mm -hmm. need some alone time sometimes. And so I think that was a good modeling too, where it's like, if you're at your limit, Mm -hmm. take a moment. And especially like if you have someone, a a partner or, or other people in your life, it is really important to be able to step away from your kids and um, be able to show that in, in the show, the importance of that as well as, you know, explaining to your kids, you know, I'm not mad at you. I just need, yeah. I just need some adult time. Break, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know if I think there's a little bit of a difference between like presence with your kid and having to be silly mm-hmm. and play in a way that feels uncomfortable for mm-hmm. you. And so I always encourage parents um, to kind of allow their kids to direct the play, yep. kind of join mm-hmm. play. Um, but play in your way, right? Like, you don't have to change your personality to play with right. your kids. Uh, it really is about uninterrupted, de- like, time that you spend devoted to mm-hmm. and present with your kids uh, more than what you do or do not do within that time. Right. And so if you are, mm-hmm. like, a different kind of player, mm-hmm. you play differently. And yeah. that's okay um, because ultimately you're spending that time with your kids and and devoted and present with your kids so i think and so i do about think being out your authentic absolutely you're still about being authentic you're still mm-hmm. being you and you want your kids to get to know you for you absolutely and so i think you know bluey's mom does a good job of being present with mm-hmm. kids and taking time with her kids to to do things and explain things mm-hmm. and and yeah. be present with them so um yeah, I can I can see the I can see the critique certainly, and I also think um, Bluey's mom might be showing up authentically. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, I don't get the sense that she. I, mean, I do get the sense that it's, it's her being her authentic self. So, moving to just kids watching television, I just want to spend a little bit of time on this. Yeah, We're talking about a kids show, it's going to be parents mm-hmm. who are you know may or may not be watching any TV with their kids, um, or maybe wondering this, like, I love Bluey. It seems like such a good show. My kids love watching it. Like, is that okay? Is it okay since it's a good show? And, mm-hmm. and I like to, you know, hook them up with the iPad when we're out and about or when we're on mm-hmm. road trips. Or, and, and this, because the technology always changes, I'm guessing the advice on this always changes. And I have not paid attention to the advice in you know, well over a decade. So I'm just wondering for you guys, what are your thoughts on the benefits of letting your kids watch this stuff? Mm -hmm. Maybe the benefits are just for the parents, but like what, when do you think it's appropriate? When is it a good idea? When is it a bad idea? Blah, blah, blah. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) Where where are we at these days with the, you know? I think one thing that I talk to parents about is for every piece of advice there's an equal and opposite piece of advice ah <laughs> uh, like that's just the way it feels that's the physics of that's the physics parenting. of parenting and research on parenting um and a part of it is finding what works for you and what works for your family um i i we have screen time at our house not rigid screen like it's not like we're getting screen time every single day we usually don't do screen time in like on school days um we do more on the weekends uh, but i think a lot of times it's intentional screen time. So it's like either mom and dad need a break and we need to be able to clean the house or do yard work or do whatever it is that we need to do and have you be kind of safe and out of the way. Mm -hmm. And some of it is really intentional time that we spend together watching Mm -hmm. content. And so I think some of the research on that suggests that it's not necessarily how much and like the rigidity around Mm -hmm. 30 minutes, 60 minutes, whatever it might be, but it's about the quality of the content and the quality of the time. And so a lot of times if you are sitting and watching Bluey with your kids, they're going to get a different kind of experience Mm -hmm. from you, from that show, than if you are plugging them in with headphones. Right. There's mm-hmm. a time and a place for that too. Mm-hmm. I'm not criticizing like that. Like an airplane. Like an airplane. <laughs> Absolutely. To me, like that is that is 
I, I don't want to hear anyone's opinion about letting your kid, like if your kid is content watching 42 mm -hmm. episodes of Bluey on mm -hmm. an airplane so you can fly across the country or whatever, you do it. You know, yeah. and that's the kind thing really yeah. to do for everyone around you too. That's the kind thing too. for everyone, yes. Uh, it's just to allow that. Um, but I do think that it can create opportunities for conversation. It can create opportunities for quality time mm -hmm. spent together where especially at the end of a day or um, a really busy weekend, if you turn on the TV and you're still present and you're still together, but you don't have the capacity mm -hmm. to like be fully engaged and play yeah. and yeah. presence yep. and just like, cool, like fine. But mm -hmm. I think this is a good show. This, you know, there's other shows yeah. too about that quality of connection. Yeah. Uh, so I don't necessarily think about it as like good or bad. Mm -hmm. I think there's time and place. There's um, purpose for it, but then also are we being strategic about, you know, screening content that mm -hmm. our kids are mm -hmm. viewing? Um, do we know what they're watching? Mm -hmm. um, and are we a part of, on some opportunities, not mm -hmm. all opportunities, but some opportunities, a part of what they're watching right. as well? I completely echo everything you just said. <clears throat> I'd also like to add that um, screen time under two, generally not recommended. Like okay. um, American Academy of Pediatrics recommends really no screen time for kiddos mm -hmm. under two. And that's mostly because of language development because mm -hmm. um, I think it's on average when you're a parent's interacting with their child, they're, they're using like 900 words an hour or something. Mm -hmm. And if you're just putting your child in front of a screen, that shrinks to like 100 mm -hmm. words an hour or something like that. And so... I can give you the link to okay. the to the article and we can put it in the description. But um, so generally from like a language development, mm -hmm. that's why they're not really recommending mm -hmm. screen time for, for really little kids as well as because for other reasons that we've already kind of discussed, <clears throat> like for Coco Melon or for some for some shows that are really bright and kind of overstimulating that can be mm -hmm. um, that can lead to like attention issues and okay. um, and just be mm -hmm just generally overstimulating for, for kids' little brains. Right. Because at that age, they're still starting to like recognize how things on screens um, relate to things in the real world. So if they see a, a tree on a screen, then they're starting to understand that that's a tree. They're starting to understand that, that's a, that a tree is, is something that's in real mm -hmm. life too. Mm -hmm. and, so, and so there are some things like that that are, that are they're still kind of understanding the world around them. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's kind of why it's not generally recommended or at least just kind of really limiting it. Yeah. Um, but once you're over the age of two, um, I think it they would recommend like an hour or two max per day, yeah. depending on the age. But I think that everything that Kelly says is completely on point where it's like, is that quality time with your kid? Are you using it to connect? Um, but man, there are times as a parent yeah. that like I can say all those things yeah. <laughs> and let me just say that was the therapist in me that yeah. was saying all those things and yeah, yeah. I, I I believe that yep did my daughter watch shows before she was two yeah, yeah she did yeah. like there were times where you know we were on an airplane um or we were in the car mm -hmm. or mom and dad just needed to hang out yeah. with some friends and you're gonna watch yeah. <laughs> some some yeah. you know Daniel Tiger or something um, while we're at while we're at brunch, um. and to remember too that it's not it's not all or nothing. So mm -hmm. my daughter, my oldest, was just in constant motion, and she was not good at playing by herself. And so sometimes I needed to take a shower or yes. whatever, and she was yeah. you know 15 months or 18 mm -hmm. months or whatever, and I just needed a break because she yep. did not stop. That's how my daughter she did not too. nap. Like uh -huh. she was just constant motor, but she liked television. Mm -hmm. That's the only thing she would stop. And I will say, like we didn't have her watch hours and hours, obviously. But she watched some, and you know she got a, like a perfect score on the verbal part of the ACT. So it's not like yeah. you have your kids watch uh -huh. shows and now they're going to be like, oh, you yeah. know, well, failing out of completely. I know, mean, my, the language department. We make jokes in my family all the time because when my mom was when I was around the age of two, my mom had my little brother, and for her entire pregnancy with my little brother, she was super sick bedridden, and mm. we joke about how Barney parented me during those times, and so it's right. like, that was when I yeah. was under two, and so, and I think I and turned you out turned okay. out just I think I turned you. out okay. but yeah, but that's what I'm saying, yeah. it's like, so it's not all or nothing, it's like, you're no. gonna ruin your kids, but maybe it's like, just something to keep in mind, mm -hmm. Min like, keep it to a minimum when they're little, 
But then if you are watching it with them, maybe use it as an opportunity to talk to them about what they're watching and let, they'll hear you laugh at something. And mm -hmm. I think that's information too, is like, oh, what's that? Why is that funny, mommy, or whatever? And I think, I do think there can be, it's like everything, right? You just want to be paying attention to why, no when and why mm -hmm. and how much. And I do think every time they're bored handing them the screen, maybe starts to develop some yep. bad. Well, because mm -hmm. I do think there is, um, especially as kids get older, real value in boredom. Yeah. And I, oh, I talk to parents about and that all the time. Kids are really struggling But we have to figure out how to tolerate yeah. being bored yeah. and how to self-entertain. And that's yeah. where a lot of the creativity and the imaginative yep. play yep. and that kind of stuff really so blossoms. True. Yep. Mm -hmm. And so even, you know, before like two years old, right? Like mm -hmm. that, I think about it more as like, as your kids get older, mm -hmm. yeah, are you using about using technology uh, more as that boredom buster? Mm -hmm. And is that really the best way to yeah. do that? You know, I think um, like in the car might be different, right? Yeah. If you're on a really right. long road trip, there's not going to be costumes that you can dress up yeah. in and you can't get the paper towel tubes and make a little monster <laughs> yeah. or whatever right. it's going to be. But yeah. so there's, again, time, yeah, and, time place. and place. But parents hate that. I mean, we really, as society, really don't like when we don't have a, a rule for yeah. like things. Like we oh, like sure. to have mm -hmm. this is the right way mm -hmm. to do it. And I think for nothing ever in parenting ever ever, ever period, hard stop. Is there ever like the, yeah. the hard and fast rule uh, and the TV and yeah. that's not an exception. Like it's about how and when yeah. and how you're using it, intentionality and all right. of the factors. Well, maybe thinking of it as a tool in their toolbox. There you go. Of mm -hmm. ways to interact with your mm -hmm. kids or to help them, whatever it's and I think One it's thing. about screening content yes. too, right? Like, so Bluey mm -hmm. has some good things, mm -hmm. right? And it's fun for parents. You can watch it. You can laugh at yeah. it. Uh, it doesn't make you want to just pull your hair out. <laughs> yeah. uh, and it isn't, you know, some of the other shows that are created for kids that I have some big feelings about mm -hmm. where I'm just like, this is not, yeah. this is not good. Like, this, this is teaching the yeah. wrong types of lessons. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think if parents can sort of screen through mm -hmm. some of that content, that's always a good thing too. Well, this has been so much fun <laughs> getting to talk about a whole different genre of television show. Um, I love this. It was, it was really actually really fun to get to watch some of those kinds of shows again and kind of got me all nostalgic of like, mm -hmm. oh, I kind of miss that when my, little, <laughs> my kids were little mm -hmm. and we were watching these fun silly little shows and, and laughing and stuff. So it was, it was great. Thank you so much for suggesting this. I was really... Yeah. yeah, it turned into just a really fun little mm -hmm. way, way back machine for me and learning about a new show that everyone's talking about. So thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. This episode of When Therapists Watch TV was produced by Ellie Mental Health. Miranda Barker is the managing producer. Jesse Stenbroughton is the technical director. Our production team also includes Julia Galloway, Lucas Mooney, and Tu Pham. A special thanks to Lucas Fellini, Nick Seeger, and Mel Springer. I'm Dr. Terry Bly. Thanks for listening.